Hello and welcome to part 8 of the Airworthiness Management and Aircraft Records series. My name is Jack Tunnell and I'm your host for this series. This will be a quick look at FAR 91.417 and how it relates to all aircraft. The key point of 91.417A1 is that the owner or pilot shall keep the following records. This is in Part 91, which applies to all Part 91 operated aircraft, whether certified, light sport, or experimental. It covers all maintenance, alteration, and inspections for all aircraft and their engines, props, rotors, and appliances. My brothers and sisters in experimental aircraft operations don't get to slough any of this off. As experimental operators, we say Part 43 doesn't apply to us, but the reality is that we are tied to many parts of 43 by these references in Part 91. Plus, our ops limits ties us to the inspection parameters in Part 43, Appendix D. These regulations give you permission to degrade the resale value of your aircraft by disposing of some of your aircraft records. My recommendation for GA aircraft that are not on a component-specific record system like CAMP, Flight Docs, SESCOM, or others is generally to keep everything forever. Requirements for approval for return to service record entries are very similar between 91.417, 43.9, and 43.11. They all require the date of return to service. They all require a description of work performed. They all require a signature and certificate number of the person performing the return to service record. I strongly recommend having the person approving the return to service print their name legibly in the record also. Time in service is only required for an inspection return to service entry, but I strongly re recommend adding it to every return to service records. Part 43.9 allows for one person performing maintenance or alteration work and having another person inspecting and providing the return to service approval record. This is the FAA guidance for the description of work performed. Please pause the presentation and take some time to read it. This is for the owner or pilot with primary airworthiness responsibility. You should be able to understand what was done and how it was done. A return to service record that says replaced alternator and ops checked OK tells you what was done, but not the methods and procedures used in doing it. Here's a picture of a return to service approval record. What is wrong with it? Well, this entry should be in the airframe log. Neither the vacuum pump nor the cowling door hinge are engine parts. I included a picture of a new four-cylinder Lycoming, and in the yellow ring is the pad that could drive a vacuum pump, but on my airplane, an alternator is mounted there. This is not engine work. If you change the engine, the vacuum pump would stay with the airframe. The same with my alternator. There is no airframe referenced. There is no time in service for the airframe. Read the record and describe from the entry the methods and procedures for the work. This is a failure of airworthiness management oversight by the owner or pilot to have this record done properly, mostly because you are not trained until now. You have the primary airworthiness responsibility because you have the money and you select where to have the maintenance done. Send any questions in an email and I will try to answer directly and your question may make its way into a future video. Thanks for watching.